I guess Ariel reached out to the show because she's desperate for help with her 11-year-old daughter, Kaylee. Ariel says that Kaylee's father has not been in her life and has only seen her five times. Ariel says her daughter is acting out and she is here for my help. Please, everyone, welcome Ariel to the show. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, you? I'm good, thank you. Nice to meet you, Abahar. Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, okay, so... Ariel, tell me, so Kaylee has recently been suspended from school. What happened? She got into a fight. Okay. Um, she's been bullied. Um, she has osteochondromas along with epilepsy. Mm -hmm. She's been bullied pretty much her whole life. Been talked about how she walked, talked. She just got sick of it. And she swung and beat up a girl at school. Got it. So these, because I'm not familiar with those conditions. Are those familiar conditions that are physical conditions? Yes. That people, okay, so kids are making fun of her physical yes. conditions. Yes. Okay, when did this out of control behavior start, in your opinion? Um, about six, seven years ago. Okay. Um, she reached out to her biological father to come down for a Christmas. I want to say it was either Christmas or a birthday. He said he would come. He never showed, didn't call, and she just got to this point where she just doesn't care anymore. Mm. So it started at that point. Yeah. Do you have any other kids? Yes, I have two other. How old are they? Um, three and one. Three and one. Yes. Okay. And she's the oldest, obviously. Yes. And you've been married to Isaiah for two years, correct? Yes. What's Kaylee's relationship with her stepdad? She's asked him to adopt her. Okay. Um, we've brought that up with Kaylee's biological father, Desmond. He says that's not going to happen. She's, they, their relationship is like oil and water sometimes. Sometimes they get along. And sometimes she has that mentality of love is just meant to hurt. She's taught him, you ain't my daddy, I hate you, hope you die. It's been mm -hmm. a lot of different things, but it all still stems from her actual father not physically being there as long as it's been. Mm. And so Kaylee's biological father, his name is Desmond. Yes. Um, Desmond's missed out, missed out on a lot in your daughter's life. A whole lot. Like what? Everything. First steps, first words, first day of school, first surgery, hospital stay, dental, um, father-daughter dance. Everything. It's tough on you. He's been on one birthday in 11 years, and she was eight, and he was only there because I drove to Michigan and picked him up yeah. and took him. What does Kaylee say about her dad um, not being around? She actually, I submitted a picture, a drawing she did. Um, me, her, and Isaiah, we sat and we did some artwork. Yeah. And she wrote how her dad makes her feel. I feel unwanted by him. I feel upset when he lies. I dislike how he disrespects women. Did you help her with this list? No. Really? Because some of this language sounds no. a little bit more adult. Mm-mm. Wow. Well, listen, Ariel says that her daughter Kaylee's out-of-control behavior is just a cry for attention from her absent father, Desmond. Desmond is joining us now from Michigan. Um, everyone help me welcome Desmond to the show. How are you doing? Desmond, welcome to the show. Is there anything Ariel has said that you feel isn't fair or true? Uh, to be 100% honest, no. Uh, when she's speaking, uh, when it comes down to the behavior of my daughter, the relationship of her daughter, as far as not being around and things like that, that's 100% facts. That line's right up with, you know, what she's speaking about. Um, it's just the back end of why is totally different than what it is that's being spoken. So you're admitting that you're not involved, that you haven't been there for your child? Uh, no, not in the content of how you're speaking. And what I mean by is, when a man calls, you have to pick up the phone. And then when the man, you know, sits at the bus station and he's being denied, you know, uh, there was the times where I would come up there and I would make those trips. You and came to my house and caught a bus once. And she was, what, three? That was In not 11 years, and I can count on one hand, you've seen her five times. Okay. Five times physically. I would say right around five, five times, six times, and honestly speaking, maybe four, to be to be realistic, and maybe maybe honestly being four. And the reason why I'm saying that and not denying most of what she's saying is because those are facts and those are true. What the problem is is what's missing with the story is is when the man is sitting at the bus station and he's called 
and his phone calls is being denied, and he's spending nights at the bus station. Well, that man is not going to spend well, spend too much of his money too many times to sleep at a When your station. daughter laid up in the hospital from seizures for five days and her daddy doesn't answer the phone, then who fought is that? When your well, child see, is having surgery for the bone disease you never show, who fought is that? When she fell off that bike and I helped her get back up, where were you? Ariel, what you speaking man. from? No, because if you're going to talk, speak facts. Desmond, what is the facts in your eyes, then? Oh, uh, the facts in the matter is poor communication. But well, why do you think that Kaylee is fighting still and acting out? Because she's dealing with the emotions from what we're seeing right now. That's not Kaylee's battle. That's the energy that was transferred from the mother down through the household. So where were you? We... Where your energy? Okay, Ari, where we're speaking from right now is a point of emotion, and that's the problem. But, but Desmond... Regardless of what communication you and her mother have, your daughter has not seen you. And I'm asking you why. You said My that daughter has not seen me because of the lack of communication and the constant fights in the battle, the lack of addresses. When a man said that he spent time sitting on the, on, sleeping at the bus station. When a man is sleeping at the bus station, okay, we make this travel, we make this trip. De and he calls Des and he's Desmond, like, Desmond, I, I, I really appreciate can you I, trying to tell the story. No, no, one second. Desmond, I really appreciate you trying to tell the story, but I'm telling you right now, that is not a case to why you haven't seen your child. The two things that okay. you're saying for me right now of me and my mm -hmm. daughter's um, child couldn't communicate, and then also w I'm sleeping at a bus stop. I did try to show up once. That's not enough of a reason for me. And I'm the reason to why, an okay, and I also want to, I want to object what you're talking about. The reason why it's not enough for you, because you're not walking the path. It's hard to explain to those who don't walk it. I, 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 I don't understand. Hold on, no, 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 no. Before we go anywhere, I don't understand why I constantly have. <laughs> Particularly, brother, why you come on the show and say, I don't know because I haven't walked the shoes. Y'all need to go Google me real quick, okay? Professionally, this is what I do. Yeah. And then secondly, I literally have a child. I have two sons that I have to communicate with their mother. And their mother and I don't see eye to eye. Yet I am there for my children always. And I want to put this out here. That's TV talk. In the reality of things of walking, that's not how it goes. If you're walking the path and y'all say that, that hey, has nothing I to do with what you're talking about. Desmond, I'm gonna ask you this. Do you think you're being the best father you can be to Kaylee? Hey, oh, if we're speaking about Kaylee, no. Okay. Ahead, that's no. that's what we've always been talking about, is Kaylee. That's what we always no, been talking about is Kaylee. No, but so, so this is the thing, because Kaylee is here today, and she's, she's younger, so I've decided that I'm not gonna be bringing her out on stage. I'm actually gonna go backstage and talk to her. How are you doing today? Good. It's a little nerve-wracking with all the cameras, right? I know even for me, sometimes I get nervous with it. <laughs> have you ever done something like this before? Yes, I did plays, and my mama has told me I did pageants when I was little. Oh, wow, you're exceptional then. Did you enjoy yeah, it? Yeah, I enjoyed the play. It's just I did one night. It was a one night only because I did not want to go again. Yeah, okay. If I can be honest with you, your mom told me that you kind of got into some trouble at school. What's been going on? This girl kept messing with me and bullying me. Yeah. To the point that I got ticked off. Yeah. And I just beat her up. Yeah. You got really angry. I understand that. I get angry sometimes too, so I understand that. When you get mad, who can you talk to? Basically, I have this. Are you able to talk to your mom or your dad? Yeah, but sometimes I'll just go home and scream at a pillow and then walk downstairs and do whatever it is to be done. Yeah, so when are you able to talk to your mom and your dad? Like, I like talking to my dad in front of my mama, but most of the times I really, sometimes I really don't talk to my mama, but when I talk to my mama, I like being alone with her. Like, sometimes I ask if we could, me and her could go out sometimes, even though we probably wouldn't, we sometimes never do it. Yeah, but you still ask. You want to know. That makes sense. So when you say you talk to your dad, is that is that your stepfather that you're talking to, or my your, stepfather? Your stepfather. You and your stepfather have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, if your dad was here today, what would you want to say to him? That your dad beat. Do you miss him? Nope. Why don't you miss him? Because he's never been there, so I don't know you. So you don't know him to miss him. Yeah. Would you like a hug from him? Why not? I don't know him. 
I don't I don't really trust a lot of people. And if I don't know you, I'm not gonna go. I'm gonna scream, yo, I'm not gonna go. That sounds just like some stuff that your mom said out there. It's, your mom told me that too. It's I don't like stuff really bad happened in my past to where it's kinda hard to tell which people to trust and which people not to. I get that. I understand that. So you you make sure that you have to be tough to protect yourself, right? I get that. Well, I have to tell you this. You are a very smart and fun young woman. I have had a lot of fun talking to you. Before I go, can I have a hug? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. mm, thank you so much for opening up. I appreciate it. Jasmine, I want to start with you. How did it feel hearing the things you heard Kaylee just say to me? Um, to be honest with you, it does not surprise me at all in the least. Your daughter said that she feels like you give excuses. You're not there for her. You're a stranger. How does that make you feel? No different. I'm not moved by it. When you know yourself and you know what you're doing, you know who you are, you know who you are as a man. Desmond, can I ask you this? And this is sincere. Because mm -hmm. I see you got a defense up, and I see that No, you... no, no. I want to be honest with you. It's no defense. I'm unbothered. I'm, I'm not going to sit up here and pretend okay. like I'm moved. Desmond, you should be moved. Let me tell you something right now. When you have a father that's saying, I'm unmoved by the fact that my daughter could be developing these things, that's an issue. And that's a you issue. That's a no one else issue. When Kaylee was writing the letters and stuff and I told him, I said, Facts. I found a letter in Kaylee's room about Facts. how she feels you don't love her. And it mm -hmm. broke me. Jasmine, do you love your daughter? If I heard my daughter tell oh, me. Oh, uh, if that's the question, I 100% to do it. You know, I, Jasmine, I'm gonna be real with you. I've been trying to be very calm with you and really get to your thing, but it gets under my skin when I see a man sitting here talking about his daughter who is saying, you're giving me excuses, who is not being there for me, and you are sitting here over nonchalant. Brother, do you think you look cool right now? <laughs> like, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and, no, no, no. You, you keep, keep, keep making the smug faces because you're hearing cheers and stuff. Dude, at the end of the day, this is your little girl. That's your seed. Mm -hmm. All of us, this is none of our children. That's your child. Listen, I'm sitting I'm here like, and you sitting over here yeah, relaxed, yeah, rolling your yeah. eyes and stuff. You think this is good? Come on now. I'm going to be honest with you. That's why I'm unbothered because I'm the man that knows my daughter and knows my You family. don't know your daughter. <laughs> Brother, wake up. You don't know your daughter and you're not doing enough for your daughter. Think about her. And why are you sitting here so smug? Do you because want to see your daughter in issues? He does. To be honest he with you, like care. I said, I'm going to say this again. Her. I know. He's unbothered, right? When y'all like said, I said that, they, they... you want to come out here so people can stroke your ego. Forget your ego. My daughter back there hurt, bro. And it's on you. No, it's not. But either way, like I was saying, when y'all asked the question about a Dez, would you tell your side of the story? I'm oh, done. Years. I'm not Ariel. putting all the footwork Ariel. in because I ain't make her by myself. Ariel, Ariel, Ariel. Ariel. You have not for 11 years. And I'm going to be honest with you about something. A lot of the problems that's going through is because you have not let go of your internal pain. No, no, no. I no, can't no, fight no, Desmond, that. Desmond, I got to stop. That. No, Desmond, what you're going to do is you're going to start attacking her, and that's not going to be healthy communication no, with the, either no, of you. No, no, no. I just heard it. I just heard it. No, 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 no. So listen, Desmond, I'm telling you what I hear. Desmond, I only repeat back what I hear. One of the things that I want to lead you to leave with, you keep saying, okay. I am a good father and I know I am. Oh, and let me tell you something. The only person who can make that decision if you're a good father or not is your daughter. And your daughter right now has clearly <laughs> just told me that well, you are honestly, not Well, honestly, and I want to reject up. that. And I want the people to hear this. That's a bunch of BS. Let me tell you why. Because the moment that you don't buy something, this is something that a good man taught. I'll cut his feet. Which I had, I had a father feet. in my cut life. Feet. Cut his feet. Like Seriously, cut his feet. Cut his feet. Cut his feet. Cut his feet. I'm sorry. No, get in here. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. If you've been dealing with that for 11 years, I was with that for about 45 minutes and I'm exhausted. This is every conversation. I can imagine. I know. She's been begging and crying for it I know. for years. I know. My daughter wants to block him. She don't know, I know. him. I know. This is, this is what I got to tell you, because it's the only advice I can give you at this point. You got to stop trying to reach out to him. And so I'm telling you that, so first of all, you can release some of that pressure. You can release some of that pain. You are doing everything you need to do. You are trying. You are stepping up. You got to release him. You have to then now focus on helping Kaylee to I'm grieve helping. him. No, 
When I say helping counseling no, no, no. sessions, the it's anger. a lot of anger in her. Yes. That's why I asked her, when was the first time you felt anger? Four. And she said four years old. You have to start to help your daughter to start to grieve the relationship that she would never have with her father while also telling her not to compare herself and letting her know that vulnerability is actually going to be her strength. For her. Yeah. Because the thing is that she needs to learn to be vulnerable. If you can do those things, not only are you going to start practicing that with yourself and start to heal in some ways, you're going to set your daughter up for the best life she can possibly have, voided of this man who can't step up and be the man that she needs him to be. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Okay. Hold on, where are you going? I'll tell you where you're going. Right here to subscribe and right here to watch more, period.